Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 16th, and it is a glorious June morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, it's just wonderful. Uh, happy Father's Day. Today is Father's Day, uh, and I wish all of you dads out there a, a great day. I hope you're all having a good time mowing the lawn and getting a tie, uh, or whatever the kids do these days. <laughs> Uh, and this is a somewhat poignant Father's Day for me because uh, yesterday, June 15th, was my dad's birthday. And uh, those of you who have, have been watching for a while know that my dad passed away back in 2022. Uh, but yesterday would have been his 80th birthday. So uh, that's something really special. And uh, I used to always tease him about it because, you know, there were years like this where it was like on the same weekend. And like, well, you're only getting one gift this year. And, then sometimes there'd be like four days between them, and that was a big deal, you know. I'd say, hey, you get two this year. <laughs> anyway, uh, I miss him, and uh, I, I know he's uh, know he's in a better place, and uh, hopefully watching the show. All right, so today we are going to be trying out, well, giving impressions of the tobacco of the month. Chosen by the live stream viewers here. Uh, this is Warhorse Bar, and this is by Standard, the Standard Tobacco Company. I think is the name of the company, based here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Standard Tobacco Company, and uh, this is a product of a collaboration between them and Russellette. It is a resurrection of an old Irish blend, and it's it's interesting. And I reviewed in the past reviewed. I gave impressions in the past of the Warhorse Ready Rubbed, which I really enjoyed. And uh, I enjoy this too, but it is a little different. And I'll, I'll tell you a bit about that. But anyway, let's get this loaded up in a pipe and started. So I've got, uh, quite randomly, but rather appropriately, my Irish second, one of my Irish seconds. This is an old pipe. This is actually one of the first pipes I bought that wasn't a drugstore pipe. And uh, I remember buying it at Century 3 Mall in Pittsburgh in the uh, uh, tobacco, what was the name of that place? The pipe store that was in all the malls that I can't think of the name of now. It'll come to me. Uh, anyway, I remember the day I bought this, and uh, it's really served me very well. It was a light tan natural briar when I got it, and you can see how beautifully that has aged and oxidized over the years. That is oxidation of the surface. It's not like the smoke is coming through the pores of the wood like some people think, but just this is what happens to briar naturally. Make sure it's clear. So, Warhorse Bar. This is a, this was chosen on Friday again, and I've been smoking a bowl pretty much every day just to, to really get a good handle on it before I talked about it in any detail. Here is the bar. You can see I've broken off quite a bit of it, but it is a very nicely pressed bar. It's not a hard cake, so you can break this off with your fingers, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, you can slice it into flake too if you want, but uh, it it works fine this way. I've got some here in the tin rubbed out, but probably not enough for a full bowl, so I'll probably rub out some more. It's a little moist, but I've had no problem breaking it off the bar, stuffing it in the pipe, and smoking it. it it's you know it behaves very very well. So let me get some of that out, and uh, let me show you what it looks like when it's rubbed out. I'm trying not to drop it on the floor because I'm doing this in my lap. So gives you some idea of what you're dealing with. It's a relatively fine ribbon cut that's been pressed into a, a nice cake. And again, it behaves beautifully. Packs well, smokes well. Got very little complaints about this in terms of the, the cut or the, uh, you know, it's easier to, to break off, it's easier to rub out. It's kind of like the ideal plug in my mind. I, I mean, I love some of those really hard, dense plugs like, uh, birds aren't coming to me today. Salt dog, salt, salty dog. Uh, that's a great tobacco and I really enjoy it, but you gotta have a knife to, to cut it. And they're good, but it's kind of nice when you can just break it off to make life easier. But one little tip I'll give you as I'm as I'm doing this is when you if you are breaking it off, try to be careful about the direction you're breaking it off in. Because some 
uh, plugs, and, and not all of them, and not this one, it seems. But some are designed to be cut in a particular way. So let me show you. The way this was pressed was in this direction. So it's real easy to just kind of break it this way. It'll, it'll, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it'll just break along the natural cleavage lines because the tobacco is stacked this way. Now, in this case, it's all mixed together, but sometimes, I think jackknife plug is a good example of this. There's layers of different leaf in there. And if you do it this way, you're not getting the full mix of all the leaves. So you want to always try to do it against that grain, you know, cutting cross grain on the plug. If, if you're a woodworker, you'll know what that means. Um, yeah, it's a little helpful to it. You get a better balance, uh, balance that way. Of course, it's more exciting the other way because you never know what you're getting. And I lost the lid. It'll turn up. It's quite a day here. I also forgot to bring my Zippo down, so we're going to be using the, uh, the Clipper Medic. If it lights. Now what I can tell you is I'm thoroughly enjoying this as a once a day uh, blend. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's got some great flavor. It, it, it smokes really well. It, it tastes, it has great flavor and it tastes good. It's the same thing. But the mouth feel of it is really wonderful. It's a very rich, creamy uh, feel. I could imagine smoking more than one bowl of this in a day, but this would not be my, you know, go-to uh, every every pipe during the day smoke. It's more of a special treat kind of thing. One of Larry's Roadrunners here. Roadrunner's getting tired. I've been using him for almost a month now. i got to open up the pamper box and get a new one. Not a new one, a different one. Come to think of it, it's about time that the baseball bat comes out. Or maybe I'll send that for playoffs. Save that for playoffs. Ah. Tamp tamper decisions. A problem I never thought I'd have. So the, the blend itself is interesting and this is very different from the ready rubbed in, to my palate uh, and both are good I would highly recommend both uh, if you're okay with what I'm about to say so it is the Virginia blend it's not lighting for me the first time I've had trouble lighting this it might be because I'm using the clipper So it's it's a it's a Virginia blend in in it's hard. And it's got a lot of mature Virginia, which is really good because it's giving that deep caramel sweetness sort of thing that I that I like in Virginia's. And there's some other Virginia in there, uh less mature, not not in any way citrusy or tart or anything like that. It's very very deep, dark blend. And speaking of dark, there's also some uh, dark fired Kentucky in there. Um, there's a hint of something that might be burly, but I don't think burly was listed on the tin. Oh, I found the lid. It was underneath the tin. what the tin actually says. Made of dark fire, Kentucky, dark air cured, and matured red Virginia. It doesn't say anything about Burley, but I'm getting something. Maybe it's from the dark fired. 
And this is not a heavy cloying dark fired. I'm not a fan of blends like old dark fired where it's just too much. But this is nice. But the star of this is the topping. Um, the topping on this is there. It's very evident, and it's going to be there through the whole bowl. It's the first thing you taste, and it's very likely the last thing you're going to taste. And that's what's different between this and the Ready Rubbed. I don't think I got the topping as consistently with the Ready Rubbed. And uh, to me, that's a big difference. You know, if you don't like this topping, you're going to hate this blend. And it's an odd topping. Man, I'd almost be tempted to, to put this in the Lakeland category. It's... It's probably Tonkin. But I, I so rarely smoke anything with Tonkin, I don't know. It's a little bit reminiscent of deer tongue, just a little bit. It's definitely got those sort of vegetal vanilla hints to it. And it's just a teeny tiny bit soapy. Um, and maybe, maybe, not on the draw, but like, the aftertaste, I get a little bit of anise, or anise, depending on who says it. But it, it's, it's very rich and creamy and, and blends in with the, the smoke so well that it doesn't feel at all cloying or... Um, I don't know. I'm not an aromatic smoker. I don't usually like blends like this, but there's something about this one where it's kind of like, it, it's nothing like Kruner. Okay, the blend is nothing like Kruner, but the experience is kind of like my experience with Kruner. I'm getting deer tongue the whole time I'm smoking Kruner. It's kind of, it's not tobacco, right? It's, it's, it's an herb that's added. Uh, but I enjoy it because it mixes so well with the burley and, and creates this really nice experience. This is like that. And the it just all works together really well. It's not it's not a typical smoking experience for me, but it's nice and uh, it's almost like a dessert after a good meal. You know, it's you don't want to eat an entire uh, plate of cheesecake. Well, you shouldn't, but <laughs> you don't want to eat an entire plate of cheesecake. But having a few bites of it is actually really nice, and that's kind of the way I feel about this. The other thing that it somewhat reminds me of, and again, it's not it's not like this, it's just the experience is like it, is uh, Kendall Cream. It's got a similar mouthfeel to that, and some of the topping notes are similar. The only real change that seems to happen is the Virginias get a bit more deeper as you go through the bowl. Just just a little bit more of a player. But honestly, it's you're gonna have trouble pulling out the different tobacco components from this because that topping is so evident throughout the bowl. And I think, and I haven't gone back and watched my um, my impressions of Warhorse Ready Rubbed, so I, I, I may be wrong about this. It's been a while since I smoked it, but I think that blend, it was more uh, tobacco forward as, the, as you went through the ball. So if you are someone that enjoys things like Kruner or, you know, a, a light Lakeland like uh, Kendall Cream, this might be something worth trying. 
if you're someone that loves old Dark Fired and thinks this is going to be a Dark Fired Kentucky explosion, it's not. You know, so that stay away from it if that's what you're looking for. Isabel's barking for some reason. She's okay. We were just out in the yard before I started this. Uh, yeah, so that's War Horse Bar. Um, I, I recommend it if that sounds like something you like. I think you should try it. I will smoke this the rest of the month, and if there's any left, I'll jar it up and, you know, we'll enjoy it on occasion. And might even buy a few more tins just to keep in the cellar. I should have said at the beginning, by the way, this is this was a gift from my buddy uh, Eddie, who is a uh, Texas Piper, I think, on YouTube. I haven't seen him in quite a while. I uh, hope you're doing well, Eddie, if you're watching. Uh, Gotta have to send him a note and let him know I, I reviewed the tobacco. It was very kind of him to send it. So, it was a busy morning. Um, I'm actually making this quite late. I, uh, well, usually I make this video seven, eight o'clock in the morning, something like that. Um, today I, I intentionally overslept. I was just really beat up uh, last night and stayed up too late and wasn't beat up. It was just, it was a long day and we, we went shopping. Uh, <laughs> but I also did a lot of house stuff and, and all that. So I was pretty busy all day and I just, woke up this morning at six and said, nah. <laughs> so I didn't get up until eight. And then I had all the stuff I have to do on Sunday mornings. Um, got all that taken care of. Uh, had to harvest the, um, the salad greens from the garden. So we, we plant these, um, I don't know what they are. One of them I think is radicchio. No, it's not because that, that forms a tight bulb. This is more spread out, but they're the kind of things, if you buy spring mix or you get the spring mix in your salad at a restaurant or something, uh, they're spring mix greens. So we've got six of those, and it was time to take the first batch from them. And you look at these plants, and they're these little things in the ground. You think, ah, I'm going to get a little handful. Of... I got this big bag full of <laughs> greens. I had, to, I had to bring them in, rinse them, dry them, and bag them up. That, that took quite a while. But they're, they're delicious, and I'm really happy to, to have them. Uh, we get them from our CSA. We get, usually get a bag every week, every two weeks. And it's it unfortunately doesn't quite last me for two weeks because I eat a lot of salads. So having these growing is, uh, is a bonus, and uh, I'll eat more salads. Uh, also got some arugula today, so I love arugula. That, that was good. Uh, the banana peppers are doing fantastic. Uh, the cucumbers are looking like they want a cucumber, but they haven't yet. Uh, they got lots of flowers. We'll see what happens there. I've had terrible luck in the past with cucumbers and tomatoes. I had really good years, and then there's been like a five-year streak where I just couldn't grow either of those. I wasn't going to plant tomatoes this year because it's been so bad, but my wife said, oh, let's get some Roman tomatoes. I can make sauce with them. Uh, so I said, well, I'll tell you what. If you want to plant Roma tomatoes and take care of them, you go right ahead, but I don't want anything to do with them. So my wife's been watching, I don't know why she's stuck on this stuff, but she's been watching all of these like homesteading uh, videos. She's got zero interest in homesteading, but she likes watching them, how they deal with their plants and how they uh, plan their gardens and, and stuff like that, how they cook the food, how they prepare it. She loves watching this stuff. Uh, one of the I don't know the names of the channel she watches. There's one that's a, a couple with some young children, and it's 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 a nice show to watch. It's gentle. Uh, they tell you about their life. They show you how they work and stuff. It, it, I understand the, the the attraction in that. The other one that she's been watching a lot of, which surprises me because I introduced her to it as a woodworking channel, is a channel called Anne of All Trades, and this woman is incredible. Uh, she's really. Uh, she does some really nice stuff. She's a good woodworker, but she's really moved into this farming homesteading thing where she's got livestock and, and big, big gardens, and she's really gotten into the sort of agricultural theory and, you know, how to, how to cultivate your soil, how to, how to grow a garden without putting a lot of work into it. 
Anyway, my wife's been watching this stuff. Uh oh, we got a backup. We'll get the backup up. Backup is the hippie layer. Uh oh. There we go. These uh, clipper lighters are funny because you can refill them. But it seems as time goes on, they just don't want to work as well. And I've tried all sorts of things to fix that, but uh, yeah, that's my hippie lighter. Couch loves that. So anyway, she's been watching these videos and she said, okay, I'll, I'll take care of the tomato plants. Now, I grew tomatoes with my grandfather. Uh, he taught me how to plant them. And, you know, I basically, you dig a hole, you put the plant in, you make sure the roots are a little bit broken up, you make sure it's deep enough, you're gentle with the plant, because when it's young, it's easy to snap it, and then you, you lightly pack the soil in, and you put a cage over it, or you, we, we actually used to put dowels in, and we tie it up as a group. Uh, so she takes these tomato plants, and she starts stripping off all the lower uh, branches. I'm like, what are you doing? You're gonna kill that thing. She's, no, no, this is how you do it. And then she did something really weird. She planted it sideways. And I don't know how else to explain this. So the roots that would normally be going like that are going like this. And then the plant is coming like this, up from it. So she actually got it bent up. She said she saw some YouTube video where they, they said that's the way you plant them. I thought these things would be dead. Uh, a couple days ago, I was looking at them, and the one is doing really well. I mean, it's, it's flourishing. The, the other one's a bit smaller, and it just looked like it was dying. It, you know, leaves well. I looked at them yesterday, and they're both vibrant and happy. And son of a gun, she's got a little tomato on one of them. And I haven't seen a tomato on a on a tomato plant in a long time. <laughs> you know, even well, cherry tomatoes work out okay, but anything like Roma tomatoes or heirlooms or anything like that can't grow. Them. So she's got a tomato. I'm like, jeez, what the heck? <laughs> so I'm letting her do it. You know, we'll see what happens. She's happy. She's also in charge of the cucumbers for the same reasons. I don't know what she did with those, but we'll see. The other thing that I have planted um, are uh, two ground cherry bushes. I really like ground cherries. They're also called gooseberries, if you're not familiar with them. Um, and they're fun to grow. The plants get really big, and you have to wait for the berries to drop off. They're like in this papery husk that forms around them. And then you collect them, and you have to dehusk them. And uh, They're good just to eat, like in salads and things like that. They've got an interesting... It's almost like eating a grape. A little round grape but the flavor is more like pineapple um, imagine a pineapple flavored grape and they make really good jam and uh, really good torts we've made in the past with them um, I don't do that anymore because my wife is diabetic and she shouldn't be eating sugary things so I don't want to tempt her with it but I've got uh, I, I like to put them in salads and stuff or just eat them they're fun a native plant they're very popular in this area you know, people will go out and harvest them um, in the wild and our CSA grows them and uh, we, we it's a pick your own kind of thing where you have to go out and gather them up off the ground which is kind of fun not good on the back my back has not been happy lately I had to take some celebrex this morning to get moving I don't know what it is. I just keep, you know, you get to the point where you're doing little things. Like yesterday, I, I picked up, there was a big storm that came through on Friday night. So yesterday, I went out in the front lawn and I picked up a lot of, I hate to call them branches because they were sticks. You know, they're just twigs and stuff that blew up. And I think just doing that, plus shopping, because shopping involves hours of walking in places like Costco. Um, by the time I got home, I was just in pain, so... And I know there are guys out there that have a lot more trouble than I do in this department. Poor 
Phil Rivera is going through some some tough back issues, so keep Phil in your prayers, and uh, hopefully he'll get some relief from that soon. And oh, speaking of prayers, my brother's doing really well, and my father-in-law's uh, starting to exercise and stuff, so he he seems to be doing well too. So thank you for for that. Uh, they both got some work to do, so please keep them in your prayers. But I really do appreciate all the all the folks that have. Uh, asked about them and have, have prayed for them and just thought kindly of them. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Well, folks, um, just to recap, Warhorse Bar, good stuff. First clipper lighter still not working. Here's something I never thought I'd say. You can always count on a hippie. So I'm going to finish this and uh, go do some more stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do today, but hopefully get some work done on that stem because I really want to get that off to, to my buddy. Uh, I've been working on it for a long time and it's just sitting there and I... It's a matter of finding the time to do it. You know, life is uh, life's hectic these days. There's always something to do, and it's very seldom something I want to do. I shouldn't say that. I wanted to take care of those uh, salad greens today, but there are other things that I want to do more. I just can't do them right now. Ah, that's just the. Uh, the mystery of life, I suppose. Anyway, I am in full-blown babble mode, so I'm going to call this to an end before I waste any more of your beautiful Sunday. Again, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope the rest of you have a wonderful Sunday as well, and are looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.